So I get a call from a buddy of mine who says, hey, I got a heck of a deal on a shifter cart on eCartingNews.com. Let's go out to the track and try it out. You might want to hold that thought for just a second. Hey everybody, welcome back to Begin Again. You know, we spend a lot of time in these videos talking about shifter carts and what it takes to drive them and how to get better and faster and all that. But it occurred to me after I got that phone call, we've not really talked about like shifter cart driving 101 and just what does it take to drive a shifter cart? Because they're a lot more complicated than you might think and they're way more complicated than a conventional cart with one only one speed. So today we're gonna do a video about what would it take to just hop into one of these things and go out and drive a few laps safely, we're not worried about speed, we're not worried about the latest hot ticket driving tips or anything like that. Just how do we get in the cart, get it started, shift gears, go around the track and experience the thrill of driving a shifter. That's it. If you want more detailed information, you can always go back and take a look at my uh, video on driver coaching where I spend time with Jake French who is coaching me. I'll put that link in the description below and that way you can find it easily. But let's take a closer look here at the shifter cart and understand what we need to do to drive this thing safely. So here's the deal. So like on a, any other car, your gas pedal is going to be on the right, your brake pedal is on the left. It's the same for any other car. Right means go, left means stop. So you know that's an easy one. The shift lever is right here and it's a sequential shift. So right now it's in neutral, but if you were to go to first gear, you'd push it forward one time and now you're in first gear. When you shift up, you just pull the gear lever back and that's second gear, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all the way. So one forward, five back, just kind of like on a motorcycle. And then over here behind the steering wheel, this is the clutch lever. And it's very, very stiff but that's how you actuate the clutch. The beauty is, is you only use it for a standing start. You never use it for going out and like starting the cart or you don't pull it in when you shift and all that. With these carts, it's just shift and lift. And so you don't have to worry about synchronizing the clutch or anything like that. So it actually becomes very simple. It's actually very quick once you get used to it. The next thing is, let's think about how we actually go and do an upshift on this cart. When we start off, We'll be going down the straightaway. We'll be full on into the throttle here, full bore. And when it gets ready to shift, you just back out of the throttle, lift off of the throttle, and then pull the gear and grab another gear and, that, and then step right back on the gas pedal again. And that's how you shift up. To shift down, you're gonna be letting off of the gas, pressing on the brake, right? So we're slowing ourselves down. And then we reach over here and we push forward downshifting the, the cart into a lower gear, whatever gear that is that you decide that you want to have. It's actually pretty simple. There's no, you know, blipping of the throttle or anything like that. It's just let off the gas and start pushing on the gear lever and, and uh, engage the gear that you're looking for. Okay. So one of the other things that's very different on a shifter cart compared to a conventional cart is you really, really want to brake in a straight line. There's this technique called trail braking, which is where you do most of your braking in a straight line. And then as you turn the steering wheel, you trail off of the brake pedal. It's used in cars a lot, but on shifter carts, it doesn't work. Everybody says brake in a straight line. So you brake hard and then you release quick off of the brake. Um, you've got front wheel brakes on this cart. So you've got braking on both ends of the, of the cart, whereas on a conventional cart, it's just the rear axle that gets braking. And so it just drives very differently. So, break in a straight line. Okay, now to start the cart is a little bit of a different deal because in a conventional cart, they either have an onboard starter or they've got a plug-in electric starter that they plug into the side of the engine, the engine fires, and then they pull the starter out. Not on this one. What you do is you get in the cart, the cart will be in neutral for the transmission, and a friend of yours will go and put his hands on your shoulder and start pushing the go-kart. After about two or three steps, then you'll bump the gear lever into first gear and the engine should just immediately catch and off you go. And it's, it's really pretty simple. To stop the cart, 
when you come back into the pits, of course you want to be in first gear going very, very slow because you never know somebody may step in front of you and you need to stop really quick. So you always want to be really slow and you want to be really heads up. But all you have to do to stop the cart really is get to where you want to be and then just apply the brake until the, the brakes overcome the engine and the engine stops. It's very simple. So one of the things that's really super important for safety is how you exit the pits onto the track and then of course how you exit the track back into the pits. One of the things that at this particular track is it's actually a fairly steep grade going out onto the track and when you're sitting as low as you sit in a go-kart you have to be prepared to stop because when you get on the track you are on the racetrack and by that I mean the pit road actually enters straight onto the racetrack. There's no blend in lane or anything like that. So when you come out of the pits, you have to be looking to your left, looking for traffic coming your way. And you also have to be ready to pull in the clutch and stop the cart in a hurry in case somebody is actually on track and, and you want to avoid them at all costs. You need to be able to do that. You just got to be heads up when you go and, and make your entrance onto the track. So the last couple of things that I just want to talk about is just the basic line through a corner. This is not going to be the optimum line or anything like that um, because each cart is different the way they work and the way they're set up even. However, the basics are still the same. When you approach a corner, and this is turn two at North Texas Cartways, you want to be right pretty much on the outside of the track right here. Not in the dirt, but you want to be on the outside. And as you come down here, you begin to turn into the corner. And because this corner is banked, you can actually carry way more speed into the corner than you think because the banking will hold you into the corner. The main thing to remember is, is that on the really fast corners, you really don't want to be bouncing the cart up against these curbs because it really unsettles the cart. So what you want to do is be about that far off the, the curbing on these fast corners. So anyway, when you exit the corner, then you'll drift out at least to the middle of the track, if not further out, and then you'll get set up for the next corner, whether it's a right-hand corner or a left-hand corner. And we'll demonstrate that with uh, some onboard video that we'll include from stuff that we shoot today. All right, so here we are exiting the pits for the very first session of the day. Got cold tires, cold brakes. I did pre-warm the engine, but with cold tires and brakes, it means you don't have just a whole lot of grip in the tires and the brakes aren't as effective as they would be once they're warmed up. So just kind of taking it easy, but this is a great lap just to kind of demonstrate the line that you would go through on the various corners. I mean, here we are going down the back straight, coming up to turn seven. And again, we're kind of on the outside of the track and just bend the cart straight on into the inside of the turn and then drift all the way to the outside. Same thing here for turns eight and then turn nine. And of course, once we exit turn nine, we'll go down the straightaway. And you can see that I'm just kind of short shifting and not really running the engine up high in the revs. And again, dropping down, not really paying a whole lot of attention to what the apex looks like, just kind of having the flow and the rhythm of going around the track. Now here we are, this is a, a lap that would be much more representative of what we're doing on this particular track through the chicane, coming up the straightaway, up through the gears, again turning in, but this time we're right up on the curb. And on the slow corners being on the curb on this track, that's really what you want to do. So going through eight, really using the curbs through nine, blowing past this four cycle cart. And then here's a good view of what it looks like from the outside. Maybe a, an outside view will help describe that. You can see on the exit, using up all the road, including the, uh, the jutter bars that we've got on the exit of that corner, going on through turn seven, and then of course heading back towards the chicane that is turns eight and nine that lead on to the main straightaway. Now I've been working on some techniques that I'm really not going to talk about here, but I'm learning and because I'm learning, it does cause some problems every now and then, like right here where I kind of do a little half spin. 
Here's the onboard view, and if you look straight ahead, you can see Paul catching all of it for posterity. So my only option is to give him a little wave and say, yep, that was me, screwed it up. And here we are going back down the main straightaway again, passing another cart before we go into turn one. Well, that was new. I've never spun in turn two before, but now I can say I have. <laughs>